going to be interviewing a friend of mine. I like to call you a friend, Dr. Stewart. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a, I feel the same way. I'm a friend of yours. He is a sociology professor at ASU, and we have been on some committees uh, in our city together, and that's where we, I don't even remember the first time I got to know you, but I feel like I've gotten to know you better in the last six months or so when you let me know that you are very invested in helping us make our census successful for our area. And what has been a pleasure for me, Dr. Stewart, is uh, at my age, I've been through a few census of our country, and it is such a pleasure. I have perspective, therefore, uh -huh. about, and I'm pr so appreciative of working with you and folks like Bob Aguilar, who have a great, uh, passionate outlook. Uh, I think you're, what I sense in you, uh, now, I'm not analyzing you, but what I sense is you care about people. This isn't just about numbers for you. And some people have asked me, why do I care about the census? And that is a, there's no one simple answer. It's a long answer with multiple parts for me. First off, it means more money for this school means more money for your school and all of the schools of the country and uh, and the community and the county whatever level you want to consider that so at. let's talk let's just start there I I know my part but you jump in here what mm -hmm. difference does it make money don't we get the same amount per pupil no matter what this every 10 year census and my understanding is that uh, we, this 10-year count will help us know how many children of poverty um, and how many children are being raised in homes with uh, not as much education. Mm -hmm. That is helpful to know that. And so then the federal government, a lot of the census impacts my federal funding. And that's where the census has such an impact. And a district like this district, all the districts where I have served uh, as an administrator in my career have been hugely funded on federal money as well as state money. Yeah, and you're, so, you're exactly right. And what the federal government basically does with those federal funding mechanisms is they look at a state like Texas and they say, well, how many children are there in Texas of school age? And, uh, uh, and then uh, they, they're looking at that compared to California and New York and Florida, uh, Those Florida are our big ones. and other places. Uh -huh. and, and then they're saying, well, let's give uh, people their proportionate share of money, for example, to pay for for uh, school lunches, that's a that's a, a very large federal head funded, start uh, for Head Start uh, that's summer another. feeding program, which is uh, still the yeah, lunches. Exactly. But our school, San Angelo ISD, we have about a, over a hundred million dollar budget, and certainly the bulk of it, the majority, comes from the state, but a hu a lot of millions come from the federal government and they, they are directly tied to how many children of poverty and that's our title one money our um, and several other but that's our biggest federal dollars plus our district gets a good bit of money for our almost 700 head start children absolutely so what that and the reason for that is people may say, well, uh, my parents paid uh, and fed me and took me to the library. But when a 
family is struggling with uh, not having enough finances, they don't have the gasoline to go to the library, or they're trying to buy uh, uh, the essentials for a family. But let's bring this down to the importance of the 10-year census. Okay, uh, do that. And, and how it fits, in, it fits in the picture of this uh, uh, funding equation. Uh, because, uh, you know, we just were talking about how the government needs to figure out how many children in Texas and the other states and so on to uh, distribute the funds. Well, you need a starting point. We start that every 10 years where we try to count all of the people uh, every 10 years. And then for the years after that, in between the 10 years, what we have is not complete counts, but we have estimates. And those estimates are based on the 10-year count. And so that 10-year count is always really important. So in the census uh, language, we, we say the future's in your hands. And kind of the harsher way, the harder way of saying that is you're going to be affected by this count this year for 10 years. Yes, sir. And for every child, since I'm in the child business, and you see a much broader picture of this, but for every child that the census shows this year is below the poverty level, our area in medical and in education will get more per child. Absolutely. And, and that can make the difference in the quality of life of that child for the rest of their lives. Yeah, let me, uh, let me put it in, in some concrete numbers. Uh, I just happen to be looking at the 2008 uh, federal expenditures uh, down to county levels. And, uh, and just for the purpose of explaining this kind of impact, and, so if we go back to the 2000 census and see how many uh, school-aged children they counted in this county, and then how many dollars in 2008 that meant per person of school age, then it's a little over $780 per person of school age that goes into education school funding in this county as of 2008. Well, I had not ever heard that number. That's significant. So if I compare that, that we're getting in SAISD from the state close to $5,000 a child, mm -hmm. and on top of that, we're getting the $700 plus dollars, uh, from the federal government, right. that is um, going to uh, provide for us extra teacher aides, extra tutors, extra books for its curriculum materials for these children to level the playing field. Yeah, as you know, some of this funding is for tutoring and for uh, catching people up and helping them with their achievements. Summer tasks school costs so forth, uh, to yeah. give them extra time on tasks to learn. Yeah. Well, one of the things in my past when I encouraged the parents anytime I could to please don't be fearful about signing up on this census. Mm -hmm. Some families who were within five, six, seven years, but still non-documented immigrants were scared to death of filling out this paperwork. And you and I are hearing, and I personally am believing that it now, there is no one, they've made a penalty a tied to if anybody shares that information, that there is a penalty. So the government will not, all of these organizations, uh, someone can be fined heavily if they, uh, report that this person yeah. is not documented. And let, let's That's all, not what the census is and, for. And let's all step, let's step back uh, to the questionnaire okay. itself, okay. Which, which I might add, does not ask about citizens. Here. Okay, it doesn't and ask so whether no you're a citizen. So there's no question about citizenship okay. on, the, uh, on the questionnaire. There are only 10 questions 
in this uh, uh, which in is this form. much shorter and and that's going to be for everybody nobody's getting any of those long forms with 30 or 40 questions and uh, those 10 questions are simply the names of people that's probably the most personal thing because you you, you know you need a name to be accurate with the county and uh, uh, and the rest of it is simply, you know, son or daughter or head of household and, and uh, male or female and various, you know, just real basic characteristics of people in those ten questions. And there's uh, no concern about, uh, about citizenship in this. This is simply to count the number of people living in households uh, in the United States and in our city and in our county uh, more locally. Well, I, I hope that people will understand there are only benefits for filling out this, the census and nothing, no, no way that it can hurt them if they fill out the yeah, census. Yeah, you know, you know, back to, uh, you know, what the Census Bureau does. They're not even interested in those names. They're interested in statistics summaries. They're interested in in this ability to say uh, that there are about 27,000 children in Tom Green County for these funding kinds of reasons, and uh, that's what that's what they want to use it for. And uh, they are, uh, you know, a Census Bureau employee is sworn to. Uh, uh, to confidentiality for a lifetime, not only while they're employed by the Census Bureau, but for their lifetime. Not even wow. members of Congress are, are sworn to confidentiality for that long. And uh, so this is a pretty strong law about, uh, that surrounds the protection of information gathered by the Census Bureau. Dr. Stewart, how on earth did you get interested in participating in this and you clearly enjoy it? Nobody's making you do this. Uh, yeah, I'm an I'm a unpaid person. Uh, I am uh, uh, the chairperson of something called the Complete Count Committee, which, uh, which is commissioned by the city and the county to uh, help promote a good response to the census. And my personal reasons have to do with, I'm a sociology teacher. There is not a day's worth of classroom material that I teach about things in society that is not touched by census information in one way or another. And so the more accurate that information is, then the more factual and correct I'm being in my in my teaching. Now, I, I also, we were chatting, you know, a little bit before we came on here about, uh, about, you know, how teachers are proud of those students that they produce. And it does turn out that one of my former students is, is uh, now uh, working at the Census Bureau in Dallas, uh, which has responsibility for the states of Mississippi and Louisiana and Texas in the census. And uh, this uh, former student, an ASU graduate, is uh, now uh, the head of the partnership uh, program for, uh, for this region. And uh, that's one of the reasons that I'm involved in this. And then thirdly, I know how important it is for the for the welfare of our community and our schools and our hospitals and roads and so on. And uh, I care about the kind of place we live in. I think many of your viewers, all of your viewers care about that as well. Well, I very much agree with you that our, some of our proudest uh, thoughts are about f former students. And I know you must be proud uh, she probably, who is this young person? Her name is Maricela Rosales. And, and, and you uh, taught her uh, while from, at ASU and evidently inspired her to be interested in sociology. Yes, and she was a sociology major and 
She has uh, worked for the Census Bureau for a number of years now. She's originally from Eden, just to the wow. east of here. Grew up over there and then came over here to ASU and then uh, out into the bigger world. So when she called upon you, you had no other option but to say yes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you, you want to work with your students. You don't want that to stop on the day when they graduate. Absolutely not. Well, you have inspired me. You've taught me a lot about um, what to say to folks if they are scared about filling out the census, about how there is, um, and we know, Dr. Stewart, that there are many people in our world that don't trust the government. Yeah. And if we had one message, I think it would be in this instance, if you're ever gonna trust, now is the time that it will not hurt you. It can only help improve the quality of life of people in our area. And let me also say something about, you know, you can become more comfortable if you know what's going on around you. And so it's important to know a little bit about the, about the census process because that helps you protect yourself from potential scam people and other kinds of things. And so as we were saying earlier, you know, the census has only these 10 questions. I gave you the most personal one is your name. So there's no social security numbers, nothing uh, personally identifying past your name. And, uh, and in addition to that, this comes to the mailbox for most people in the middle of March in a questionnaire form in their mail. The best way to keep the census taker from knocking on your door, which, you know, worries a lot of people when someone knocks on your door, is this really a census worker? The best uh, way to avoid that, and not have a census taker on your door, uh, is to simply fill that form out and put it back in the mail. If you don't put it in back in the mail, then of course, because our, our government depends on this count of the people uh, for reasons we've talked about, they have to try to find out for those people who don't respond to the questionnaire by, uh, uh, by turning it back in. That also gets expensive for taxpayers, I might add. For someone to go door to door, which uh, the census you all are going to be using uh, one of our schools to screen the large number of people, 1,500 or so, that will, it will take to go door to door for the people who do not mail back their... Uh, so it's very time and costly time uh, takes a lot of uh, several weeks and then it costs the taxpayer as you've just said to have to send somebody door to door and in west texas that often means you know traveling a hundred miles in some of the some of the uh, territory that we have and that of course even makes it more expensive what uh if you when you finish and all of these come in and you all have gone door to door, then what is your role after that, Dr. Stewart? Well, my role after that is to uh, simply, uh, uh, you know, joyously use the, uh, uh, the accurate information from the census in my, in my teaching to enjoy the fact that, uh, that our uh, community has an accurate count and therefore a fair share of uh, these funds and just uh, to, um, uh, to enjoy the fact that people stand up and be counted. It's an important uh, thing to, to uh, you know, stand up and be counted when it's time to do that. I think you told me that uh, 10 years ago, the Tom Green County, the percentage of people that were that responded yeah. am I remembering it was in the 50 percent or 60 percent no that's not Tom Green County okay. we're, we're better than that uh, we do have some 
pockets in the uh, in the city that go down into the 50 percent okay. range. So these are called census tracts, uh, and so there are a few pockets in the city that are that it's uh, that harder that to low. get the count. Yes. Okay. And uh, they tend to be the areas of the city that uh, run down the center. They start up around uh, Reagan and Lakeview and run down through this, the center of the city to uh, to Rio to the Rio Vista area. And uh, those are the generally speaking the areas that uh, uh, that. Uh, the response to the questionnaire historically has been at a lower level, okay. and uh, we hope through uh, through this kind of effort to inform people that that improves. Uh, so more that we this get year. a better count for yeah. our whole area. Yeah. Well, I've enjoyed working a, even just a little bit with you, Dr. Stewart, and I am so grateful that you are here trying to help us get this count. Well, thank you for having me. I really it's do appreciate it. It's my pleasure, Dr. Stewart, to be your friend. And I'll be happy to come back and give you an update at some point in we March will. if you would like We'll that. do that. Okay. We'll, we'll look forward to that. That would be good. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>